What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A where we just answer your questions that you guys sent in through Instagram, both for myself and for Rihanna. It's going to be mostly financial based questions, but we'll throw in some personal and random questions here and there just to have some fun with it. I have the questions on my phone, so let's just go ahead and jump into it and get started. Yeah, I try not to read the questions beforehand because then I think about it too much. So she just reads them. I don't know what's coming and then uh, I just spout off an answer. <laughs> So question number one is going to be, what do you do when your income is too high for a Roth IRA? Easy, backdoor Roth IRA. Uh, this is really simple actually. Uh, almost any of the institutions know what this means now. Uh, any of the brokerages is what I mean. So like Vanguard or anybody like that. So yes, once you reach a certain income limit, you can no longer directly contribute to your Roth IRA. So what you're gonna do is the backdoor Roth IRA. You're gonna contribute to your traditional IRA first, and then you're just going to do a transfer or a rollover into your Roth IRA. And that's exactly how you get the money in. And you actually just end up paying the taxes on it at the end of the year instead of up front. It's really easy. We have done it and it's just an extra step, but it really doesn't make it very complicated. Yeah, it literally takes, I'd say, uh, about 24 hours because the money has to settle into your traditional IRA first and then you do the rollover and it's done. If you have any trouble, just call your brokerage like Vanguard or Fidelity or anybody and they can talk you through all the steps. Yep, or DM me on Instagram and I can walk you through it. Question number two, I have money invested in the stock market, but I'm going back to grad school. Should I sell it and use that money to pay for school or take out loans? Mm, this is a tough one. They this didn't is... say how it's invested. They didn't say if it was retirement or just a brokerage account. Right. So if it's just sitting in a brokerage account and it's not a tax advantage account, then yeah, you could go ahead and use that money. Uh, you're going to have to pay taxes on any of the gains though. So if you do pull that money out and it's not tax advantage, you will be responsible for taxes on the capital gains, unless it was a loss. Uh, so be prepared for that. So I guess it was really going to depend on several situations. I would need to know your other debt, your other income, things like that. You have other ways to source that money without taking it out of the brokerage account. But I guess if you need that money right now and it's a means to an end to get you through grad school, then go ahead, take that money out and do that. Uh, you just want to avoid doing that in the future, especially in tax advantage accounts like your IRAs or solos or anything like that. My advice would be, especially if this is, you're talking directly about a retirement account, is if you could get through school just taking the federal loans, because those are very low interest controlled loans, that might be better than taking money out of your retirement account. Yeah, that's just like a personal preference. I mean, if you are just completely anti-debt, then go ahead and grab that money. But if you want to borrow the federal loans at a low interest rate, and sometimes you don't even have to pay those up front. Now, I think for grad school, you do have to pay them as you go, but either way, it's an extremely low interest rate and leave your money in the brokerage making eight to 10% in a good market. So you never, it's a little bit of a gamble. Mm -hmm and then leveraging those low interest rate student loans, graduate, pay those loans off, and then you never touch the brokerage money. But you would be taking on more debt to do that, and that's just uh, called leveraging debt, and it's completely up to you and your comfort zone. Before we move on to the next question, I need to interrupt your Q&A to say, please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, and subscribe if you like our videos and you wanna follow along with the channel. We appreciate you guys so much, and it really helps with the algorithm. Our channel has, well, John's channel, I help with it, has been growing so much lately, and it's been so much fun getting to know all you guys. So Thank subscribe you. and like. Question number three, this is one we actually get a lot and it's interesting because we had strong opinions on it before, but that is, should I buy or rent a house? Hmm. Again, it's gonna depend on your situation. What and market do you live in? What are your long-term goals? Are you planning on being settled where you're currently living? What does the rental market look like? What is the current market like? Where mm -hmm. Right now it seems like everything is priced way over market. Mm -hmm. Things are going for over appraisal by like 30 and 40 grand depending on the market. Um, and I'm not telling anybody to wait. It could go higher from here. So I'm not giving you any type of buying advice. Uh, but if it was us personally, we would not be buying in this in this market right now. We bought at the beginning of this market and got lucky with that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we would probably just rent until things chilled out a little bit, unless you know for a fact you're getting a great deal regardless of the current market. Uh, but where are you gonna live? Uh, what market is it? Is it an appreciating market? Are people moving out of that market? Um, are you going for appreciation or do you just want a rental? There's a lot of things that you have to factor here. Another thing is like buying when you move off to school is a great idea, especially if you house hack. 
but now you have to manage that property while going to school. And is that going to allow you to study and focus on school? Again, this is all personal mm -hmm. preference. And I think that another thing is they like to try to cut and dry this. Like if you don't buy, you're an idiot. Or, you know, if you rent, you're stupid. It's like, well, it depends on your situation and what you're trying to do. Rihanna and I rented until we were in our 30s. Until um, less than a year ago. We rented right. And we had roommates while we were married. And, and we wanted to keep renting, but we live in a weird area where the rental market is not very big and our basically only option was to buy or move out of this area so absolutely so it just depended on our situation and we did just fine financially i guess could we have made smarter moves always there's always going to be a smarter move you can make no matter what but you also have to consider your mental health and your current situation and how things are going to work best for you so not everything's just like this is the best strategy financially and if you don't do this you're an idiot that's yeah. it's not that cut and dry yeah, and if you have a specific situation you want to talk to us about, I really recommend joining our More Than Money platform. Um, that is where we have the forums and the live streams and everything where you can talk to us directly. You can explain your situation. And then John and I, as well as a lot of our other like-minded members, will kind of give you advice and our insight based on your situation. So the link for that will be in the description below. It's very affordable, and we'd love to see you over there. Absolutely. It's exactly why we created the group because it's something we wish we had when we were starting out and even like years into it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we're finally in the position and have the audience in order to have some type of community like this. And the price is a no brainer. The group is incredible. We have so much fun in there. Okay. Now we have a fun personal question and that is how did you guys meet? Oh my gosh. Want me to tell the story? Yes, but we, we uh, need to watch the time. Okay. I'll make it a fast <laughs> answer. Anyways. So John and I actually went to the same high school, but he was four years ahead of me. So we didn't meet in high school. She we, was 18 when I met her. Yeah. I said we didn't meet in high school. I know, but I just, I, wanted to, I just want to cut to the chase right there. So we actually met the summer after I graduated high school. So I was 18 and a half and um, John was 21. We met at Myrtle Beach during senior beach week. Even though we were from the same city, we didn't know each other. It may we, or may not have been my fourth or fifth beach week. <laughs> Don't tell people that. <laughs> And we actually met because we had mutual friends and John came with some friends and I came with some friends and we all ended up hanging out and then we were inseparable ever since. It was all just perfect. Yeah, yeah everything from there on out, smooth sailing, no problems, no issues, perfect happy couple. That's well, not true. <laughs> it was a very interesting way to meet and um, we should go back there though. Oh my and gosh. And so we'll stay in that hotel? Yeah, and go to the same clubs. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think those clubs are open anymore. But yes, that's how we met in Myrtle Beach. Uh, yeah, I was like on my fifth beach week. You were on your first, because you, yeah. you just graduated. And uh, yeah. Would you keep an emergency fund over six months worth of money? That was hard to six say. Six months worth. Um, worried about inflation. Oh, they're talking about you know cash sitting right now. Mm -hmm. So I just saw a quote earlier, cash is trash because of inflation. And basically what they're getting at here is that any cash sitting right now is getting eaten by inflation because inflation is creeping up. So what that means is any money currently sitting for long periods of time is actually becoming worth less and less. And that's why it's so important to have your money invested anytime. Inflation's always been there, but it is creeping up. So on average, it's about 2%. I haven't looked at recently, but I think I've heard things like 3% or mm -hmm. higher. And so, you know, if your money, if you have $100,000 sitting in the bank account all year long, then at the end of that year, it's only worth $97,000. So your money is actually losing value. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, you should still have your emergency fund though. The emergency fund isn't trying to beat inflation. It's literally there in case anything pops up. Now, if you can get away with a less emergency fund, if you have a really stable job, you know, if uh, you have a dual income, if you have all types of things that can secure you otherwise, then sure, a three to four month emergency fund may be fine for your particular situation. And then go ahead and invest that other money to try to beat the inflation. But don't just go investing your money or putting it somewhere trying to beat inflation, but be uneducated on where you're putting that money or you might lose way more than what inflation is. An example of this is if you went and bought some type of small crypto coin uh, on a whim and that thing crashed, then you're better off taking that 3% inflation than you were to lose half your money in that crypto coin. Very true. I agree with everything John said and I actually don't even have anything to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is, how can I invest in real estate with y'all? <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about that? Um, yeah, because it was unsolicited questions. Okay. So I am not allowed to solicit for investors, but I can kind of explain how we work. I'll do a whole video on this. Uh, but a and Investments, the company I own with my two partners, Andrew and Steve, we use private money to buy and sell real estate. And basically what that looks like is, well, Rihanna and I are private investors inside the company. So we give the company our money, then we go and purchase the distressed property, 
we flip it with our money, and at the end of the transaction, we get a profit share. Now we get that because we're owners, but everybody else coming in would get around 10% annualized return on the investment. Mm -hmm. I say around because I'm just being careful here on how I, I'm not pitching anything, I'm not pitching to anybody, I'm just explaining how we work. But we pay a 10%, which is above average return, 8% is average, and we pay that every single month on their investment until their money is returned. And we do all of our properties like that. We have never used banks or hard money. We flipped every single property, over 150, closing on 180 of these properties now with private money. And that's exactly how we operate. So yes, it is possible to invest with us, but we do need to establish a relationship first. And I never solicit or ask for money. You'll never hear that from me uh, on my platform. So I just kind of- But how do they invest with you? Like that. Like how contact you on Instagram? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, just, you can reach out to me. Again, we have to establish a relationship and I have to do my due diligence to make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, we would never pray or take somebody's money that didn't have it to lose or to invest. And when I say lose, it's because anything has risk, right? And we're not allowed to guarantee anything. If anybody guarantees you anything on investment, they are both A, lying to you, and B, it's illegal. Uh, so be careful of that. So while we have never not paid an investor back, we've always paid back, we're still not allowed to use the word guarantee and you'll never hear me use it. With all investments come risk, and the higher their return, the higher the risk. So there's a good explanation for you. So Can't guarantee anything, but nobody's money's ever been lost or not returned. So that's a good track record. The next question is actually gonna be the $20 winner because we've been waiting to choose the winner and we just randomly chose it. And that question is gonna be, if you are financially free, why do you continue going to school, work, et cetera? And that question was asked by Alicia M. Curry. Great question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we often we wonder the same end. thing yeah, ourselves. Um, so we've reached this status yeah. a while ago. I, I mean, years ago. We have been financially free for a long time. In fact, that my first retirement stint, we were technically financially free. I think you were working so that we can continue to contribute. It's okay. I could apply to CRNA school. Right. And so we could travel for free, essentially. Yeah. But I think it comes down to like passion and purpose and needing to have some type of purpose, the word I just used. And I had to find that out the hard way. If you've never watched our video, Retirement is a Scam, which is a huge controversial video that I put out. And of course, it's one of my most popular. So I get a ton of hate comments. But basically, you know, I just found myself needing to be wanted or, or like needed to be depended on. Is that like the way to say it? Yeah, like, I think needed to be like valuable in some way. More right. Like not exactly wanted. But. S sitting on it. You know, I don't, you know what I meant? Like yeah. Need, needed to be depended on or like have, bringing value. And what I think I'm trying to get at here is that sitting on a beach drinking Mai Tais all day was never going to make me happy. I thought that I could at least relax or chill out and find like, you know, photography or find like a, you know, a, a hobby to keep me busy, but it just wasn't enough. I personally needed more stimulation than that. So that was just never going to fly to me. But I, what I've learned through all the comments in that video is that to each their own, mm -hmm. everyone's different. Some people could just hang out and play video games all day and be perfectly happy. And for that, I applaud you. That's incredible because I'm somewhat jealous of that. But me personally, and even you to an extent, like you're you're easier going than I, I am. I could, uh, I'll like kind of say my part. I could definitely take a lot more time off not doing something like career-wise than you could um, because I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like pursuing hobbies and that does make me feel more f fulfilled. Um, also though, I think another reason that I'm not okay with not pursuing school or work any or anything like that at this point is because although we are financially free, um, I don't feel like we're financially free enough to meet all our goals yet and we are setting B up for her future so that kind of adds to everything. Um, financial freedom can be defined in a lot of different ways. We're financially free enough to stop working now and continue living comfortably but there's things we want to do to make an impact on the world that we um, could not do if we stopped right now. Yeah and I think that we also continually move the goalpost, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately, but we do that. So we reach a goal and we say, okay, well then we'll just get to this goal. And we learned a long time ago that that's not gonna make us any happier, mm -hmm. okay? But what it will do is allow us more freedom, which is happiness. And what we mean by more freedom is, financially freedom, I mean, we can live off, and we do live off $35,000 a year. And you know we make that in less than a month. And so we could definitely do that and stop working. But the problem for us becomes, well, that's living at like a minimum, you know, a minimalist lifestyle, which yeah. we're fine with most of the time. But we want the option or the, you know, the freedom 
to go on an African safari two times a month if we wanted to and yeah. not worry about the expense. And we'll probably never do that. And that's probably us lying to ourselves or justifying I'll it. I'll book it for us. Speak <laughs> but, for yourself. But what I'm saying is, is we just don't ever want to be limited in what we can do. And now, of course, yeah. having baby B in our lives, that is an additional an expense that we've taken on and somebody else that we need to plan for. And so, again, we push the goal. And so we just constantly do that. So for your answer, it's going to be independent to most and depend on your own personal circumstances and your personality. But for us, we need it for a purpose and we continue to do it. And we love doing what we do most of the time, especially teaching you guys and help you guys reach a similar situation to us. Yeah, exactly. So I do love watching like the homesteading channels and things. And I think, gosh, like if we could just be so minimalist that we're happy with just growing our own um, food and just living off the land, that would be so awesome. But I feel like we just need more stimulation. Yeah. I, think I, that's I was like, word. what is it? It's, it's like, <laughs> it's like that. I think that would be fun for a while, but then we'd be like, okay, what's next? Like we're always moving on to something else. Yeah. And like you said, we want to make sure that baby B always has the option to pursue her passions without worrying about finances in the background, kind of. So to an extent, like we want her to um, do something great with her life, but we also don't want money to limit her. So we're gonna make sure she's set up for her whole life. But she will be understanding of it and appreciative of it. She will not be a spoiled brat with money, we promise that. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a really long answer, probably a whole other video. We yeah. probably need to do retirement as a scam part two. Oh, we should. Yeah. You're so right. Anyways, we it's hard to explain that quickly. So basically that was the gist of it. Yeah, that was a really long winded day quick answer for you and I hope it helps explain why we continue to do what we do. With how volatile the stock market is, would you recommend cashing some out and putting them into mutual funds or real estate, aka safer investment, talking about 40 to 50k? Um, where are you going to put it? Real estate was their suggestion? Real estate or mutual funds. Okay. Well, first of all, you should probably be in index funds no matter what. Um, so that's always our opinion or our advice is that you should not be in individual stocks unless you're okay with losing that money because when the market gets volatile, your money will move very quickly with that. Now it's great because it can go way up, but it also can go way down. So an index fund kind of, you know, protects you from those huge swings. You'll never see probably a 30% return in the year, but you also won't see your money go to zero. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you right now are all in individual stocks, I would move some of that money. I'm not telling you what to do. This is what I would do. I would move some of that money to an index fund and help buffer, you know, some of that extreme volatile ism. Mm -hmm. Volatilism? There's no way that's Volatility. Word. Volatility. Thank you. Uh, and if you're <laughs> interested in real estate and have a way to go ahead and invest in that quickly, so don't move your money out of there and then not have a plan for that money and you're just saying real estate. But if you have an option or an opportunity to invest that money in some real estate, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Always diversify if you can, especially if you know what you're doing. I'm going to read this one so I don't get confused. Are there any rules to price a rental property, like speaking about monthly rent versus total price of the home? Yes, actually, there is a rule. Now, I hate rules when it comes to investing. I always call them guidelines because it's always going to depend. Again, I'm always going to preach this on your individual situation and your own goals. OK, but there is something called the one percent rule. So you want to get one percent of gross rent for what you pay for the building. OK, so what that means is. If you cost you $200,000 to purchase the unit, then you should be making at least $2,000 a month in rent. And then that $2,000 a month needs to cover all of your expenses and your mortgage. Okay, so that's kind of the rule. Well, I hate that rule is it doesn't work in all markets and it could have you missing out on a great deal or miss out on something that could have a lot of forced appreciation in it. And then you could eventually get it there. So just use it as a guideline. Look it up. It's called the 1% rule. It's on bigger pockets. It's everywhere. And that's kind of the answer to that question. But again, use it as a guideline, not as a rule. It's a pretty simple guideline, I guess. And then do you guys use Rehab Valuator for rental properties at all? Or is it just for flips? Yep. So if you have not checked out the software yet, please do this. It's one of the cheapest and best softwares out there. We use it for all of our flips. We use it for some of our rentals. We use it to evaluate all of our properties. It even does comps now. So if you don't have access to the MLS, you need to get on here. It's called Rehab Valuator. The link to it will be down below in the description and give you a free 30-day trial. Again, we've been using it for about two years now and we love it. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool and easy to use. John uses it more than me, but I've used it to make videos on like how to use it with him. So 
Anyways, that was actually the last question we're gonna answer. The rest were adoption-based questions and foster-based questions, so we're gonna answer those in the other video. I got an idea, yeah. just because I know we're, we're tight on time here. Okay. You ask them and I'll answer them as fast as I can. Just do like three more. Oh, okay. Okay? So yeah. we call this like the fire round. Okay, fire Let's, round? The fire round, because I just, I hate when I don't get to somebody's oh, question. Oh, wait, can I, I, I've been listening to a podcast where they do a fire round, and um, we basically went through all the questions that weren't similar, so can I ask you, questions that I think would be interesting to hear the answers to. Okay. Okay, ready? Right. This is based off um, Grace Beverly's Working Hard or Hardly Working podcast because I don't want to be like stealing any ideas. Um, I love her and her. She's a book and a podcast and everything. I'm the Fire Round's been around for a long yeah. time. But that's okay, okay, but I like her questions because right. she starts off every podcast like this. Okay, okay ready? Ready? Yep. Reading or a podcast? For me personally, yeah, podcast. Okay. Night Owl or Early Bird? Hmm. Night owl. Taking a walk or watching Netflix? <laughs> Should be taking a walk, but Netflix keeps my mind moving quicker. I mean, it keeps my mind busier. Yeah. Uh, can we a fast paced walk with a purpose, like a hike? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, to decompress after a hard day at work, going out. Gym. <laughs> the question was going to a bar or doing a workout. Oh, yeah, the, the workout. Okay. Um, airplane mode or notifications on when you're on vacation? <laughs> It should be airplane mode, but I'm notifications on. Yeah, the 1,000% your notifications on. Yeah. At the end of a hard day, would you rather have a glass of wine or a cup of tea? Cup of tea. I hate wine. Yuck. <laughs> 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 yep, definitely. I can vouch for that because you like chai tea. Yeah, I like chai tea with boba. All right, well, that was fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate your support. I'm almost at 25,000 subscribers, and it's so cool. Couldn't do it without you guys, and I appreciate every single one of you. If you guys have any suggestions for any other videos, leave them in the comments below, and we should have a before and after house video coming up for you. Actually, a few of them. Next week. Yep, so we should be finishing up maybe two or three more houses in the coming weeks. So can't wait to bring those to you. And we might be, if it works out, touring an $18 million, 18,000 square foot mansion here soon. So we're really excited about that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for doing it with me as always. And we'll see you guys on the next one.